Greetings you in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you for our online service. God is keeping us in his mighty way. We are his children. We have it to give honor and glory to Almighty God. Before we start our worship, I like to read a scripture, Psalms 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with the gladness. Come before him with the joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his grave with the thanksgiving and his court with the praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. His faithfulness continues to all generations. So we can say we are here this evening because our God is good. Our God faithfulness is good. Our God's protection is with us. Our God provision is with us. So come, let us enjoy the presence of the Lord. Please come and join in the worship. We are going to worship together our almighty God. Thank you.
Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Life may hold, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Don't speak in vain, no syllable empty all. 
once you have spoken all nature and signs follow the sound of your voice and as you speak a hundred billion creatures catch your breath evolving in pursuit of what you
Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Walking around. Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faith Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. Okay, we're going to just take a few moments uh, as a church to pray together. There is so much to be thankful for, but there are also so many needs. So let's just pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for all of the care workers, frontline workers, NHS workers, key workers who are working so hard right now to provide uh, essential services for us. We think also of those who are in care homes uh, and those who are providing caring for them. Father, bless them, God. Encourage them, Father. Strengthen them, Lord, in their task, Father. And, and Lord, we also want to pray for the uh, government uh, and, and for those who are researching vaccines right at this moment, Father. We pray that you will give them wisdom, Father, that a vaccine will be found uh, very soon, Father. And for our government in all of the decisions that it has to make with all of the economic consequences yes. that are coming, Father, there is so much implication, so many consequences. God, give them wisdom, we pray. Give yes. our leaders wisdom, oh God, that they may uh, decide rightly, Lord, and wisely for our country in Jesus' name. Nancy, why don't you just pray for, for personal needs in the church? Yes, Father God, Lord, we thank you that there are many people, God, in our church, in our family's life, our friends, that we know, God, that you have healed them from this COVID virus, Father God. And, and Lord God, we just want to continue to pray for our family, Lord God, our friends, Lord God, that are unwell. Lord God, at this Jesus. moment, whether they're in the hospital or at home, Father, we pray for a continual touch of God and yes, touch Lord. them and heal them, Father yes, God, we Jesus. pray. And we speak into their bodies, Lord God, that they will be healed. In 
in yes, Jesus Lord. name God that they will not die but live and declare the works of God Lord God Almighty God we thank you Father God and we also pray for those God who are at home oh God during this lockdown Lord we want to pray for them mentally yes. God we pray Father that you'll drive out every anxiety and fear yes, from Jesus. their lives oh God protect them Father God and Lord God deliver them from all fear Father yes. God and Lord we pray oh God during, the, during this lockdown Father God we pray for the families Father God mm -hmm. and Lord that they will be mentally well Lord God not only that but Father there will be peace yes. and joy in the homes yes. Lord God and Lord we pray that God that you will be with the marriages and with the with the siblings oh God as they're being locked down and cooped up in the home Lord God Lord we pray for your peace yes. over our home God in the name of Jesus God that we thank, thank you, you that at the end of this lockdown Lord God Lord that we will come back to the house of God and we will rejoice Lord God amen. and be united God amen. in Jesus name yes amen amen Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our online service. I hope that you are all doing well and you're safe with the people around you and your families during this lockdown. Here are a couple of things that are coming your way. This Sunday coming up, we are going to have our Riot Night service online. If you've never been before, Riot is a dynamic and vibrant service led by youth from here at the Lighthouse. And I assure you, you do not want to miss out. See you there. Next Thursday, we're going to have our powerhouse evening service online. If you've never been before, that's our prayer and worship service. That's gonna be starting at 7.30 p.m. and it's open for everybody to come along and be in an environment for worship. That's also going to be going out online. For more info, have a look at all our social media and our website. And if you are joining us for the first ever time, we just want to give you a big welcome, a big shout out to you from whatever location you're from. And we'd love to get to know you. So please go check out our social medias on our Instagram, our Twitter, our Facebook, or our website at lighthousecc.co.uk. Make sure you get yourself signed up to our M groups and C groups and find out how you can make this house your home. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the service. Hey guys, we just want to say a huge thank you to you guys at home that you are adapting with us in this time where everything is changing, you are on board and you have adapted in our new way of giving that you have allowed us to be able to present to you our online giving and you have come on board with us. It's a great comfort for us as a church to know that the word that God had for us through Pastor Paul for this year owners or stewards that we took it on board as a church that we are stewards of the blessing that God has given us and that we're releasing that now if you have been missing how to potentially give now in the times that we're living because we're not at our physical location Richard's just gonna come on now and he's just gonna tell you and walk you through how you can give online thank you guys and yes stay blessed 50% of us give our offering in person we can't do that now, but if you still want to give and are able, let me give you three simple ways. Number one is a direct payment from your bank account. This is easy to do from your online bank or smartphone app. Simply set the Lighthouse up as a payee using the name Lighthouse Christian Centre and the sort code and account number on screen. Don't worry if you miss it, we'll put it on again at the end of the stream. Once this is done, you can send a one-off or regular payment. It's simple, fast and free. The second way to give is to use the Give It app. This is available in your app stores. Just download and register. Then to give, you just need to set an amount and scan the QR code on screen or search for the Lighthouse Manchester in the lists. There is a small fee we have to pay when you use this method. The third way is to simply send us a check in the post. Make the check payable to the Lighthouse Christian Centre and send it to the Lighthouse, 12 Centenary Park, Coronet Way, M50 1RE. Feel 
share a scripture with you guys right now I wanted to share a scripture from Matthew chapter 14 um, and it talks about when Peter was walking on water with Jesus um, and so I'm going to start from chapter 27 and it says but Jesus spoke to them at once Do, don't be afraid he said take courage for I am here then Peter called to him Lord if it's really you tell me to come and walk on the water and Jesus said yes come so Peter went over the side of the boat and he walked towards Jesus on the water but when he began to see the strong wind and the waves he was terrified and he began to sink save me Lord he shouted Jesus immediately reached out his hand and grabbed him you have so little faith Jesus said why do you doubt me 
Then they climbed back into the boat and the wind stopped and the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. And when I was reading this passage, I wanted to just encourage you guys with keep where we are keeping our focus on during this time and during this season. It's, there's such a power in our perspective. During that time when Peter stepped out of the boat and he walked towards Jesus, his eyes were fixed on him. His eyes were fixed on Jesus and he was able to walk. But as soon as he looked around at the storm, at the waves, at the winds, he began to sink. And I think it's so easy during this time when we're hearing all the negative reports in the news, when we're hearing statistics of death tolls, that we can begin to sink below all of what we're hearing. We can begin to um, feel overwhelmed by what we're hearing right now. But I want to encourage you guys that when we keep our focus on Jesus, we can walk with him above it and that Jesus wants us to focus on him. Doesn't mean that storm's not gonna be there. Doesn't mean that there aren't gonna be waves and there aren't gonna be problems that we face, but it means that we're gonna choose our response and our response is gonna be to focus on him. Another point that I wanted to take from this passage as well was that Peter was able to do something extraordinary. He could have just waited in the boat and waited out the storm, but instead he said to Jesus, I wanna walk on water with you. Jesus call me so I can walk on that water and he he stepped out of that boat and, and he did something extraordinary something beyond his own expectations and right now during the season I believe we're not just going to wait out a storm we're not just going to wait out this unprecedented time this difficult season but I believe we're going to have some walking on water moments we're going to have something extraordinary to carry away with us from the season so I want to encourage you guys right now Wherever you are, whatever you're feeling, keep your eyes and keep focused on Jesus and let's step out of the boat in some situations. Let's reach out to those friends. Let's share the word to people who are hurting. Let's step out of the boat and let's hear some extraordinary testimonies of what God is going to do during this time. Thanks guys and be blessed.
Thank you to all our key workers. That you, what you guys have been doing is a tremendous job. That you guys have been bringing stability to our lives through this time. And today we want to show you this special video from one of our children's homes uh, in India that is supported by Lim. Uh, just saying thank you to you guys. For those that don't know, Lim is our Lighthouse International Ministries, and what we do is we go out into the mission field overseas in Romania and India. And this is one of the children's homes that we support in India called El Shaddai. Take a look. Hi everyone, this video is dedicated to warriors who have taken a stand to fight against the coronavirus. They have sacrificed their sleep and comfort just to serve humanity. We, Al Shaddai family, appreciate all the hard work and efforts put in by all the people involved in this epidemic time. Thank you doctors. Thank you nurses. Thank you, police. Thank you, security guard. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, media. Thank you, bankers. Thank you, farmers. Thank you, vegetable sellers. Thank you, social workers. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, donors. Stay home. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome this morning to our live stream from the Lighthouse. Um, I hope you're all well. This is really strange, isn't it? Okay, we're, we're locked down. This is my first word in lockdown, and guys, I am missing seeing you all just smiling at me or frowning at me or uh, just giving me a wave. So I'm going to give you a wave. I know you're out there, and, and I hope you've had already... Um, a great time of worship. 
and just uh, a time just to focus and to still yourselves. And I just want to share um, just a brief word this morning with you. And um, it's such a joy to be able to bring this word. So I want to just, uh, my title for the word is uh, From Donkeys to Destiny. And um, I just, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Jesse was preaching and he started his word um, by talking about interruptions in life. And we are in the biggest interruption uh, in, in our world, in our lives, really, at the minute. Everything, as you know, has gone to lockdown and we have seriously been interrupted. Now, I had a little panic. I've got to be honest. I had a little panic because I thought, oh, Jesse's going to do my word. I'd already got it ready. And... Um, this is the joy about being at home. I was screaming at the TV and the, everyone in my house was like, you're right, Joe." I was like, Jesse! Now, I wouldn't do that on a Sunday, maybe not. But hey, I wanted just to start by thinking about this interruption that we're in. Now, Jesus in his ministry, it was just full of interruptions. And he kind of just had this uh, capacity to manage an interruption while still on his mission, still on the task that he was going to do. And I, I just want to encourage you this morning, hey, maybe this moment in time, this interruption, actually you can use as a God interruption. And I want to bring a word this morning just to encourage you, to bring you hope, to um, at this time to maybe give you another opportunity just to, to be aware and listen to that still, small voice that Pastor spoke about last week. So the word, okay, I want to bring this morning is actually from Samuel. We're still in Samuel for those of you. And my last, last word, we uh, looked at Samuel, but this time we're coming down a little bit in the chapters and we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 9. And uh, this is the passage where Samuel um, anoints Saul as king. But I want to just, before the anointing, I just want to take us back a little bit as to how God orchestrated, literally behind the scenes, this, this positioning of Saul with Samuel by using donkeys. So let's read the passage. So I am just going to read um, 1 Samuel chapter 9, just starting from verse 3. Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, take one of the servants with you and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the hill country of Ephraim and through the area around Shalishar, but they did not find them. They went on into the district of Shalem, but the donkeys were not there. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin, and, but they did not find them. When they reached the district of Zuf, Saul said to the servant who was with him, Come, let's go back. Or my father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. But the servant replied, Look, in this town there is a man of God. He is highly respected and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us the way to take. Saul said to his servant, if we go, what can we give the man? The food is in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered him again. Look, he said, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver and I will give it to the man of God so that he will tell us what way to take. Good, Saul said to his servant, come, let's go. So they set out for the town where the man of God was and they were going up the hill to the town um, and they met some girls coming out to draw water. And they asked them, is the seer here? He is, they answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He has just come to our town today. For the people have a sacrifice at the high place. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes, because he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those who are invited will eat. Go up now. You should find him about this time. They went up to the town and as they were entering it, there was Samuel coming toward them on his way up to the high place. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him as leader over my people of Israel. He will deliver my people from the land of the Philistines. I have looked upon my people, for their cry has reached me. Now I just uh, 
this passage just uh, struck me, it made me giggle actually, that it starts with the search of a donkey. So listen, I want my first point, consider the interruption. Consider this time, this lockdown time. It's a unique time, my friends. And listen, I wonder what tasks you are doing in this time that you are feeling quite irritated about. That they are winding you up, you think these are menial, this is, this is really boring, this mean, is meaningless, it's purposeless. I want to tell you, for some of you, those tasks are part of what God is orchestrating behind the scenes for your destiny. Because Kish, Saul's dad, says to him, the donkeys are missing, Saul, I need you to go and find them. What an interruption. Seriously? Now, if you, you know me, I'm honest, so I'm telling you, my response would be, really? Just can't one of the servants go and look for the daft donkeys? Really? Does it have to be me? Really? I'm a bit busy. I've got other things to do. This task that you could perceive as being a real, a real irritant that the servants could just go and do. Saul's father asked him to go and look for the donkeys. Now we know we've read the passage, so we know God is orchestrating behind the scenes. But bless him, Saul says, okay, I'll take a servant and we'll go and search. If you've heard the still small voice in this season, if you've heard God ask you to do a task maybe, or to make a phone call, or to bake, or to read a book, to contact somebody that you have avoided, and you're thinking, well, it's not really that important. I, I can leave it. I'll, I'll do it another day. I'll go and look for the donkeys later. I can leave it a few more days. They'll come home on their own. Or they've been gone that long anyway, they're probably dead. If you're thinking, oh, that task, oh, it's not very high profile, is it? It's a bit boring, it's irritating me. I want to just encourage you, have another think. Because actually, maybe that task is part of something that when lockdown is released, God is going to use and is already orchestrating behind the scenes. So, searching for the donkeys takes days. This, this made me laugh, because actually, it, it, we read Saul goes, he's obedient to his father, and he takes the servant, and for three days, three long days, they search for these donkeys that can't be found. And actually, you know, it says in the words that, that it describes the terrain that they went through, the, the land, um, the, the different lands that they went through. They went through mountains. They went through really hilly, hilly terrain. That's not easy. It's not easy. It wasn't an easy journey. Um, and three days it took, and they didn't find these donkeys. Sometimes it feels like we're in a situation for days and weeks on end. This quarantine, this lockdown, we're now in week five and we still are unsure what will happen in the beginning of May. We're unsure, we're we don't know what's going to occur. This is a take in, it's time. And some of you, I appreciate, are, as Pastor preached last week, are in a dark place. You feel like you're too in the hilly terrain. And it is taking days and days. And for what purpose? Saul had had enough. After it gets to the point that the supplies are gone, they can't find these donkeys. And he says to the servant, enough's enough. This is the Joe Marks version. Enough's enough. I, I'm not looking anymore for these donkeys dastardly donkeys who are hiding somewhere. Let's just go home. Let's go home to my father because actually probably now his worry is turning on where are we, not where are the donkeys. Enough is enough. 
But this was, you tangibly sense in the word, this was that pivotal moment that actually if Saul had abandoned everything and not listened to the servant, he'd have just gone home and missed that destiny. And sometimes I have a sense in my life, I was thinking, what have, what have I jeopardised at times? Because I've just given up in that moment where actually things were going to shift. I've just had enough. I've got to the end of myself and actually let myself just be distracted or stop what I was doing and actually it was the point of breakthrough it was it it was the pivotal moment where things were going to shift and I want to encourage you this morning as well don't give up keep on keeping on you can do this guys this you're so near that shifting point I want to encourage you to just don't jeopardize what God is at work doing but keep on listening for that still small voice of guidance. And the servant says, Saul, it, let, it's okay. I've heard there is a man of God in this town. Listen, this is my final point. It says in the message version that he says, there is a prophet here. And I want to say to you guys, there is a God who cares. There is a God who is at work behind the scenes in this time. He is orchestrating situations in your life that you need to be prepared for when lockdown changes and things shift. And Saul, Saul says, oh, OK, well, I've got nothing to give this man of God, this prophet, which is what the custom was in, in that time. And the servant is prepared. He says, it's OK, I have. One piece uh, of shekel that we can give to the, to the prophet. So they go to find the man of God. And they go, this, this made me laugh. This really made me laugh because they're going to find the man of God to ask him where the donkeys are. <laughs> they're like, should we go, we'll go and ask him which way we should go to find these donkeys uh, I think I might have had different questions from a man of God, but hey, this was what was priority. So they go into the town and they find Samuel. And I love in the word, it says God had already spoken to Samuel and had told him that the next day he would meet Saul, this man who he would anoint as king. So Samuel is on high alert. Listen, my friends. Some of you in this time, in this season, maybe God is speaking to you and preparing you to encourage somebody else, to bring a word to, uh, to someone's life outside of lockdown. I want to encourage you to listen, to be preparing. Maybe you're going to be a Samuel to someone who needs encouragement when they come out of this season, who needs a hand to hold, who needs uplifting, who needs the word of God being brought to their lives. Maybe in this season, it's your responsibility to seek God. So they meet Samuel. And Samuel later on, I haven't read the, the text later on, but Samuel says, yeah, they say, are you, are you the seer? Or are you the prophet? And he says, yeah, I am the prophet. And he says to Saul, come with me. Come and eat with me. And I'm going to tell you, Saul, what's on your mind. That's the version in the message. I'm going to tell you what's on your mind. Now, bear in mind, Saul is still looking for his donkeys. And then he says, oh, by the way, the donkeys are fine. They've made the way home. Can you imagine Saul thinking, right. And last point, Saul, Israel's future is in your hands. Hmm. I want to just encourage you, friends, this morning, wherever you are, wherever you're listening from, at whatever time of day it is, 
I want to encourage you, don't be disheartened. God sees all. And like in this passage of scripture, God was orchestrating behind the scenes through a very simple task of Saul going to look for a donkey, of him becoming the anointed king at the time. God sees your situation. God sees your struggles. God sees your challenges. God knows your heart. He knows what you've said yesterday. He knows what you said, you said to him this morning. And my friends, I want to encourage you, as though you might not see it, and as though you might not even sense it, God is at work. And I want to say to you, those tasks and those, those situations and those things that the Holy Spirit has prompted you in lockdown to do, and you have either just ignored or had a reason not to do, or had an excuse, or have even said, I will come to it later. I want to just remind you this morning, maybe now is the time. Now is the time to be preparing because God is orchestrating a new appointment outside of lockdown for you. He's orchestrating a, a, a relationship for you outside of lockdown. He has blessings in store for you, but I'm... I'm asking you to just be obedient this morning to his still small voice. I want to say to you, maybe you need to go and look for those donkeys. Stop the excuses. Knuckle down. Sometimes it just takes a bit of discipline because almost when you're at home doing very little, sometimes it's easy to have every distraction going. But this time, I want to say, when you, when you feel the prompting, I want you to sit, be still, listen to God's voice, and be obedient, and say, okay, I'm going to do that task. Because now I understand, actually, God, you may be preparing me for something that is very significant in my destiny. So I want to pray for you guys. I want to bless you for being with us this morning. So let's just pray. Father, I thank you for your word and I pray for every single person that is sharing this word, that is listening online. Father, I pray that they will feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that you will bring to their mind those things that actually are in your purpose for their destiny. You will bring to mind the tasks that are actually going to bring blessing and going to bring anointing and going to bring purpose and going to bring divine appointments that are going to bring um, divine opportunities, that they're going to bring divine promotions. But now is the time you are asking them to prepare. So I pray for every person, God, that you will, you will, you will speak to them, that they will be receptive to hearing your prompting. Lord, I thank you that this is not wasted time, that this is a God interruption, this is a God opportunity. And help us, Father, to not see this time as an irritant and a frustration, but to see it as something that is pivotal in our lives and in the season we're in. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. I hope to see you soon. Please take care. Look after yourselves. Look after your family and stay safe. Lots of love. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could care? Till I met you
I hope you enjoyed the service and I'm sure it really blessed you. But we want to make sure that you guys stay connected throughout the week. There are still loads of things happening. Get connected with a C group, get connected with an M group. There are still prayer meetings that are all happening online. I know we can't be together in person and we are really missing you guys. But make sure you still get connected online and find out what else is happening. There's still prayer meetings that are going on as well. So make sure you get connected with the Zooms and the different modes of, of communications that we have going on. Also, keep up to date on our social media. We've got our Facebook, we've got our Instagram, and we've got our Twitter. So if you're any, on any social media, make sure you check out what's happening on there. Also, you can go to our website, which will tell you updates of what's going on. Keep yourself connected during this time. Also, we're going to do the same as last week. I know we kept this, the chat going for a bit longer after the service, so you guys can go to your kitchens, grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee on yourself and carry on chatting with one another. We want to keep connected, we want to keep that community together and we want to make sure that you guys still feel part of the Lighthouse community. So type in, message in to people, see how everyone's doing and we're going to keep that going for a bit longer now guys. Have a blessed week and we hope you stay safe. God bless.
Thank you.